There are several different ways to communicate wirelessly. The one we're most familiar with and that we use most often in our smart homes is Wi-Fi. But there's also Bluetooth, infrared, Z-Wave, and RF. There's a lot of useful devices that use radio frequency. So how do we get those radio frequency devices to interact with our Wi-Fi connected devices so we can use them with Home Assistant? You get one of these. This is the Sonoff RF Bridge. It's not the only RF bridge, but it's Sonoff. So why do we need an RF bridge? Well, if you have RF devices and you want to interact with them through Home Assistant or some other hub, you need some way for those RF signals to be converted or relayed to the Wi-Fi network. That's exactly what the RF bridge does. It receives RF signals and passes them on to the Wi-Fi network. It can also receive Wi-Fi commands and convert them to RF signals to send to your RF devices that are capable of acting on those messages. The most common smart home RF devices are motion sensors, door and window sensors, doorbells, and RF remote controls. Until recently, I didn't have any RF devices in my home setup, but I had a lot of people that were asking me for help with the Sonoff RF bridge. And fortunately, the good folks at Banggood were nice enough to send me a Sonoff RF bridge package that I could test out, figure out, and set up with Home Assistant. Thanks, Banggood. The device I have includes the RF bridge, one motion sensor, and two door or window sensors. But you know me. I love Sonoff, but I'm more interested in getting inside and replacing the firmware with something that we can use with Home Assistant. And as you probably know, my new firmware of choice has been Tasmoda. But are you ready for the plot twist? In this case, I'm not going to use Tasmoda. Bum bum bum! Tasmoda does work with the Sonoff RF bridge. And initially, I flashed my bridge with Tasmoda. But when the bridge receives an RF signal and outputs an MQTT message in Tasmoda, it put out a lot of information. But I couldn't reliably extract the information that I needed to use it with Home Assistant. I got a lot of help from Donka and others in the Home Assistant Discord chat. And I know it's possible to use Tasmoda with the Sonoff RF bridge because other people are doing it. But after a week of struggling to try and decipher the MQTT payload, I gave it up for an easier solution. I'm still pretty much married to Tasmoda and I'm sure someday I'll figure it out and maybe make another tutorial about Tasmoda and the RF bridge. But for the sake of getting this baby working, I went with a different solution. Still love you, Theo. Now I've got to give huge thanks here to Jay After Dark. He is a genius. He introduced me to a different firmware for the bridge called Open MQTT Gateway, but we're going to call it OMG. Sorry, I won't do that again. OMG is pretty similar to Tasmoda in that it's really an Arduino sketch and it can be used on ESP8266 based devices. It outputs a very simple MQTT payload that's pretty easy to integrate and use with Home Assistant. There's a GitHub page with all the instructions for loading it on a variety of different devices. But to make things super simple for us Sonoff of files, Jay After Dark spent hours ignoring his kids and his family responsibilities to create for us a binary file to make flashing the Sonoff RF bridge as easy as possible. Here's the process for flashing the bridge. If you don't already have it, follow this link and grab this ESP Easy zip file. Extract it. Inside you'll find ESP8266.exe, aka Flash Easy. Now here's a link where you can download the bin file that Jay After Dark made for us. Download it to the same folder as Flash ESP8266. Now get into the guts of your Sonoff bridge. There's a little switch here that you need to switch to off for flashing. After flashing, you're going to want to switch it back to on or your RF functions won't work. Connect your USB to serial adapter to these pins here. 3 volts RX TX ground. Now hold down this button on the side and connect your USB to serial adapter to your computer. Then open Flash Easy, select your COM port, select open MQTT gateway dot bin, hit flash and offer up a burnt sacrifice. Once this is successful, and I'm sure it will be on your first try, then get out your phone or other Wi-Fi device and look for a Wi-Fi network called OpenMQTT Gateway. 
In this case, you can't do the serial communication through Termite, like we did with the 4-channel Sonoff. I don't know if OMG uses serial commands, and if it does, I don't know what they are. When you connect to that network, select your home Wi-Fi, put in your Wi-Fi password, then put in your MQTT broker information, IP address, and user and password if you have it. That's it. After that, OMG will be working. Now there isn't a web UI for OMG, like we're used to with Tasmoda. So to see what MQTT messages our RF bridge is now able to publish, we need some way to monitor the messages that our MQTT broker is receiving. When an RF device sends a signal and it's received by the RF bridge, the bridge publishes an MQTT message to this topic, and the payload is what's unique for each sensor. So to find out what the code is for your sensor, you need to subscribe to that topic. There are a bunch of different ways to do that. The couple of options that I've used are MQTT Lens, which is a Chrome browser extension, or MQTT.fx. For either one, you're gonna need your MQTT broker information, IP address, user and password, and then the topic for the RF bridge. Now with the RF bridge powered up, connected to your network, and connected to your MQTT broker, when you activate an RF sensor, in this case, we use the motion sensor to start with, you'll see a code displayed. That code is how we're gonna link Home Assistant to that sensor. Once we have that code, we're ready to set up the motion sensor in Home Assistant. To do that, we add a new binary sensor in our configuration.yaml file. Name it whatever you want. Replace 123456 with the code that we got when we activated the motion sensor. For payload off, we're just gonna put in a fake payload. That's because there's no no motion code, meaning the sensor doesn't send a different message when there's no motion. It just doesn't send anything. So to get our sensor state in Home Assistant to revert back to no motion, we need to set up a fake payload for the off state and then set up an automation in Home Assistant to change the sensor to the off state after a period of time. If we don't do that, after one motion detection, the sensor will stay in the on state in Home Assistant forever. For simplicity and consistency, we're just gonna use the same RF code that we got when we activated the motion sensor, but we're gonna add off to the end of it. And that way we know that we have a unique code that only applies to that sensor. Now to set the sensor to off or no motion, we need to make an automation. And it's gonna look like this. Make sure the entity ID for your binary sensor matches whatever you called your binary sensor. I'm calling mine garage motion because I'm gonna put it in the garage. This automation says when the garage motion sensor is on for five seconds, we're gonna turn it back to off, simple. What I really wanna use that motion sensor for is to turn the garage lights off if there isn't anybody out there moving around. So I made this automation to do exactly that. If that motion sensor goes from on to off and stays off for 30 minutes, then this automation will turn the garage lights off. Now this kit I got also came with some door sensors. We'll set them up the same way. Open MQTT lens, activate the sensor, and take note of the code that it produces. Each sensor will have a unique code. Copy that code and put it in the payload of a new binary sensor. You can pretty much just copy the motion sensor, except change the device class to door, and change two, three, four, five, six, seven to the code you just copied. And in my case, I have two of those sensors, so I'm gonna have two entries that look pretty much the same, except different codes and different names. Now these sensors also only send one signal when they're open or on. So we need to set up another automation, just like we did with the motion sensor, to set these door sensors back to off because they don't send a separate signal that says off. Now some of you really smart guys out there have probably already figured out what's wrong with this situation. We've got door sensors here that will activate and send a signal when the door is opened, but they don't send a signal that says the door is closed. We can set our automation to say, after five seconds, set the door state in Home Assistant back to closed, but that doesn't mean the door is really closed. The door is probably still open. That could be a problem. As far as I could figure out, there's no really good way to use these sensors to tell you when the door is closed again. But there are other door sensors that will send two codes, one for open and one for closed. These are not those sensors, but those are. If your plan is to use the RF bridge in an alarm system, where it'd be really important for you to know if the door was open or closed, you're probably gonna to wanna to invest in some of those two signal RF door sensors. 
These single code door sensors are probably most useful in places where you either don't expect that the door will be opened very much or ever, or in situations where you want to know if the door's been opened, but you don't really care if it's been closed again. Let me give you an example. I'm using these sensors as a trigger, but not really as a state sensor. That is, they're not going to tell me open or closed, but when they're activated, I'll make something else happen through an automation. This is how I'm using these single code door sensors. This automation is triggered if any one of these three things is true. Either the shop door is open, or the garage to house door is open, or there's motion in the garage. Any one of those three things can act as the trigger. The condition is that the garage lights are already off. If the garage lights are on, the automation stops there, nothing happens. But if the garage lights are off, then the lights turn on. So when the sensor on my shop door is open, the lights turn on. And that's all I want. I don't care if the door closes again or not. And then as long as there's motion in the garage, the PIR sensor will keep the lights on until there's no motion and then it'll turn them off. Out in the garage now, lights are off, door sensor's on. Let's see if it works. Bingo! Well, that's it. The Sonoff RF bridge flashed with OMG and integrated into Home Assistant with MQTT. My overall impression of this is definitely positive. The RF bridge has other capabilities that I didn't cover in this video. That's because I'm still learning how to use it. So if any of you out there have the bridge and you've got it working, leave some comments. Let us know what you're doing, how you're using it, and what we can do to get more out of it. That'd be awesome. And these RF sensors use very little energy, so they can run on a battery for a long time. Which reminds me, if you do get these sensors, you need these funky A23 batteries. But that's just for the door sensor. The motion sensor just uses two AA batteries. If you hadn't noticed yet, YouTube added a community page to help creators keep in touch with subscribers. Awesome. You've seen this screen before. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.